think it's a great step forward for the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and particularly for the regional airport. It will assure us that we will have continued work upon this new facility that we're building. And in our agreement, we have uh, made the regional airport a common working ground for both of these lo local unions. Tess cannot speak English well enough to converse at a normal rate, so he was provided earphones through which a translator will be able to keep him apprised of the court activity. The first two prospective jurors called said that they did not believe in the death penalty because of the New Testament and were dismissed. After that, jury selection settled down to a pretty normal pace. However, it is anticipated by everyone here that it could take as long as Thursday to get a jury impaneled. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move at the Bell County Courthouse in Belton. The Fort Worth City Council will probably act next week on an amendment to the city's public accommodations ordinance. In a letter to the City Council this morning, James Gaskins of Fort Worth pointed out that the city's public accommodation ordinance does not apply to daycare centers. He says that in privately operated daycare centers in Fort Worth, there's considerable discrimination against blacks. City Council members seemed favorably inclined to pass the amendment to the ordinance that Mr. Gaskins asked for. Ora G. Compton is chairman of the city's Human Relations Commission. What is the situation on daycare centers? Through voluntary efforts of the commission, about half of the commercial daycare centers, nurseries, have signed commitments that they will serve children without regard to race, color, or creed. We really do not know, except for four or five that we know are discriminating. We don't know what the balance of the daycare centers are doing. Because well, we've had complaints about four or five. Well, why hasn't this already been taken care of through uh, anti-discriminatory acts and ordinances? Well, unfortunately, it is not covered in either federal, state, or local legislation. And uh, I think one of the reasons, quite frankly, is that it's easier to get legislation passed uh, that uh, you, you do it by stages. And uh, so they, in the first 1964 passage of the Civil Rights Act. They just didn't include these because they felt there'd be more political opposition to it. Mr. Compton says that his commission has been working on an amendment to the Public Accommodations Ordinance. If it passes next week, and it looks like it will with the predisposition of the council members, then one of the last bastions of discrimination in the law in Fort Worth will be eliminated. This is Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth.
there's been quite a bit of concern. He talked about the stupendously, steeply rising cost of our state government. He neglected to mention, however, that many of the bills that were passed in the 61st session of the legislature were directly responsible for this increase in taxes. And if he had been so concerned about in economy in our government, I wonder why he didn't use his veto power to a greater extent in 1969. Uh, I noticed that he made no decision as to whether or not he's going to run for a third term. I presume that is because uh, he is rather uncertain of the future at this time. Uh, I will make no comment about that because that, those are matters best left up to um, the federal grand jury and other people. Guzman and Lopez were transferred from Dallas County to Bell County late last week as a security measure. And security is obvious here, but not overstated. There are some Texas Rangers, there are a few deputies brought in from Dallas County, and the leaves have been canceled for all Bell County officials during the course of the trial. Sheriff Lester Gunn of Bell County told me that he has not seen any problems thus far and does not anticipate any problems. Still, he is watching security very closely. This morning, Guzman and Lopez made the first of what promises to be a long series of trips from the jail where they are housed here in Bell County to the courthouse, a distance of just one block away. They are transferred in chains. They are transferred by automobile, although it would be only a short walk. And there are always three deputies with each of the men during the course of the transfer. But the move this morning was a very careful one with no problems seen. Today's opening round in the court went smoothly. Defense attorneys asked that separate trials be granted Guzman and Lopez. Judge R.T. Scales of Dallas, hearing the case here, overruled that motion for lack of justification. Attorney Metcalf, who represents Lopez, said the motion would almost certainly come up again later. We're hoping that we can be uh, an involved group in the planning of the routing and the scheduling and the coordinating bodies to try to get a good cross-country rail service through to and through Dallas uh, to give Dallas access to various parts of the nation through rail traffic. Amtrak virtually promised that uh, traffic would come through Dallas anyway. Do you think now that there's a, a good chance it won't? I don't know that there's a good chance that it won't, but I, w our position on the city is that we would like to be involved in the planning of that, uh, of that service so that we can coordinate our services uh, with the Amtrak board. Uh, for example, the uh, regional planning regarding mass transit and rapid transit. I would like to see the city be involved in coordinating that type of program in through the Amtrak program.
it's a new challenge for me to be associated with this new country club in the North uh, Dallas Carrollton area. It, they have beautiful property out there. It's going to lend itself to a beautiful golf course. So there will be added attractions, and I hope to add my part by bringing some new, fresh ideas from uh, the experiences I've had in country clubs and on golf courses throughout the world. And Now, despite this handicap, the members nonetheless work their way through uh, a hard session of long hours, and they wandered through a maze of diverse subjects, including such things as the elegy to the Boston Strangler and the great meal sack stuffing of the daylight saving controversy. And it culminated in, the la in a, a last week with an almost hopeless logjam of legislation and an unparalleled display of invictiveness and bitterness. So that on that last night, I was afraid for a while it would degenerate into a good old-fashioned Irish Donnybrook. <laughs> 